Before we begin, can you uh, give us a quick rundown of uh, iTech Pros, who you guys are, what you do, what makes you special? Yeah, absolutely. So we do primarily uh, servo consulting, development, training, and uh, a couple of years ago, we bought out IT2B. So we also handle the servo components and we're adding some NG uh, components as well. Okay, um, so, so that's plugins, components, beams, libraries. Yeah, the whole kitchen sink. Yeah, awesome. So most people know me. I've been working with Servoy for about 10 years. And with me, I have Paul Brom Bromwell. He is our senior developer, and he's actually the author of the reporting feature that we're going to demo today. Okay, thanks for coming, Paul. The wizard behind the curtain. <laughs> Ignore okay. the man behind the curtain. <laughs> uh, so can you guys, uh, uh, well, first of all, for... Um, you know, the tradition of the tech series is we like to show the demos first and because uh, I think that's why people want to come. Uh, and then we do we do an overview afterwards. Uh, so I've asked these guys to prepare a few demos. Uh, Scott, can you tell us a bit about what you're going to demo today? Yep. So we've got three of them. Uh, the first one is just going to be kind of basic expressions um, for how to get data to show up on your reports. And then we'll get into more complex examples like charts and doing like a common invoice. So at this point, I'll stop sharing and we'll turn it over to you, Paul. Sounds good. You see my screen okay? Yep, we've got it. So I have a Northwind uh, little example here, just customers to orders to order items. Um, and we're going to first look at the expression demo. Um, I already have the Word document pulled up over here on the right. But from the code perspective, I'm just grabbing a found set, loading the record, setting up the output file. Um, the key is doing this open document call, which is pointing towards this template file. Um, you use this new call called create link data source. Um, you pass in the found set you want to use and what you want the found set to be called inside the template. So you can see the shippers over here matches the shippers over here. Um, then you basically say, I want to merge the link template, save the file, show the PDF. So if I run it here, you can see the raw values over here on the, the left, the operation that I'm doing in the middle, and then what it looks like on the right. Um, so I'm taking the ID one and I'm actually formatting it with the thousands digits. So you can see over here the uh, formatted, uh, same for uppercase. Um, you put the colon upper, um, same for lowercase. Uh, you can do uh, capitals on the uh, first letter of each. You can do the first letter or the first letter of the first word capital. You can turn uh, regular text into hyperlinks. You can format dates, you can format times. Um, so it's just a simple um, expression demo. And you can see over here on the right, it's pretty simple to set up each of those. Um, it's pretty much the name of the field that you want in brackets, colon, and then the format for that. Nice. Uh, moving on to the invoice from the code perspective. I'm just making sure the order that you click on has a invoice record and I set that up if it's not there, open up the, up, opening up the template. Um, the new piece with this is that you can add relationships to it. Um, so while, let me pull up the, so the main found set is called invoices. Um, but when I add the orders to customers, you can rename it to customers. They don't have to type all that out. So I'm basically setting up all the joins that I want to be available in the report. Um, merge template, save, show dialogue. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, so the at the top, I'm printing out um, information about the company that's producing the invoice. Um, on the right, I'm doing the date, invoice number, customer ID. Uh, bill to populating with customer information uh, and I'm actually looping over each order item um, in the relationship writing out the product name the quantity the unit price 
in the total amount with proper formatting. Uh, with the reporting engine, you have access to aggregates. Um, so down here I say total line items and I want the number of line items in there using this dot count. And that'll give me the three that I'm looking for. And you also have access to the sum aggregate. So I wanna sum up the quantity of every um, uh, order item I have here. And I wanna print it out there. Uh, with this new reporting engine, you also have access to uh, calculations. So I have a calculation there called calc subtotal, um, formatting to number and the uh, plugin runs the calculation and stores or prints it to the uh, report there. And you could do the same thing with pure link expressions. Uh, here I'm creating a variable inside the template, I'm storing that to subtotal. Um, I'm basically getting the sum of the quantity times the unit price, um, printing out the subtotal, multiply by the tax rate. Um, so there, there are two ways to, to get that done with this new reporting engine. And Paul, can you go multiple hops on those relations? Did I see that right? Yeah. Um, so I have uh, my invoices found set and hopping from invoices to orders, then orders to order details, then order details to products. Um, the key is just to add every step of the hop. So make sure you add invoice to orders and then orders to order details and then to products. Nice. And then the, the second argument there in the string where it says customer, employee, details, products, that's like an alias, right? Yep. So, so you can see invoices to orders called order. And then, um, that, yeah, it's right there. I get it. Yeah. So that, that's nice because then you're, um, you're the person who's going to be modifying the template or designing the template doesn't really have to know the, the names of things in your database. You get sort of control on how to expose those. Yeah. It provides that abstraction. So say you need to, um, even rename a relationship. You now don't have a hundred templates that you need to go through to, um, update that relationship name. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's really nice. So our last example is a little report. Um, with the reporting engine, you can actually uh, do filtering, um, grouping, and ordering. So basically what I have here is a list of all the order, or let me go to the code first. Um, so I'm grabbing the orders found set. I need order details to get the price of things and then I'm merging the template there. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm filtering where the order date is uh, or the year of the order date is 2006. I wanna group by year and month and then order by the year and then by the month to make sure that the years go in the right order and then the months also go in the right order. So since we have group data here, we're going to uh, loop over that group data, print out the year. Um, I do the plus 1900 here because the get year call on timestamps returns the number of years since 1900. So I wanted to print the, the correct date there. Uh, months are also zero indexed. Um, so we wanna have that appear correctly. Uh, give me the count of the total orders, and then I'm summing up um, the price of each individual order and then summing that up. So you can see that in January we had $4,085 and that's aggregating all that data inside of the template. Paul, could people also sort of build this data themselves in a, like a data set? Um, and then convert that to a found set, pass it in. Um, and in memory found set should work. Yeah. Um, it, the plugin doesn't currently support data sets. Right. Okay, and there, if, if for those of you that are either evaluating Servoy or new to Servoy, uh, what Paul and Scott just talked about is a way to sort of have arbitrary kinds of data sets where the data source could be from a special query or from a web service or anywhere really. And uh, what they're saying is because they're, the report template uh, engine is, is based on Servoy found sets that uh, you have the flexibility to take advantage of all the other features of Servoy when you, when you pass that in. So if you want to pre-calculate um, you know, or aggregate things, 
you, you could do that as well. So that's, that's kind of just for those of you who aren't uh, deep into Servoy, that's, that's what they're talking about. And the last thing I have to show is you can actually um, generate charts based off of this data. Um, so I'm saying my X axis is the month slash year. And then my Y axis is basically the, the same thing from up here. Um, just give me the sum for that month. And you can see here that it charted um, the data from the data set. Excellent. Thanks, Paul. No problem. All right, let's go back to some slides. Okay, can everybody see my screen again? Yes. All right, so let's start with kind of a diagram um, of just how the different pieces fit together. So of course you've got your Servoy application and then you'll be using the Word plugin. And like you saw in Paul's demo, you'll pass like uh, as parameters, the found sets and relations that you want and the path to the Word template file, which is just a normal Word file uh, set up like Paul showed. Uh, the plugin will then open up that file, merge your data, and then write it back out to the file of your choice. And you can choose what the format of that file is. So it could uh, merge it into another Word document or it can also produce like HTML and PDFs. And there's a couple other options as well. So how does it work? Uh, it's found set based, like we talked about, your data sets are supported through in-memory found sets, uh, relations, calculations, HTML, images, charts, all of that uh, sort of thing is supported. Uh, it will get executed server side on the ng client and the web client, and then on the smart client, it will get executed uh, client side, as you would expect. Uh, the templates are in Microsoft Word, like Paul showed. Um, it's similar to Mail Merge, if any of you guys have used that before, but it's a little bit simpler because uh, you don't have to go and add all the fields. You can just use the you know less than and greater than sort of tags um, for the link uh, syntax. Uh, but there's also more advanced options like Paul showed. So you can do looping. Uh, there's lots of built-in functions. Uh, and we're going to have good documentation on what's available. Uh, but we can also we can also go directly to expose and see kind of the under the hood stuff of what's available as well. Uh, support wise, it's available from Servoy six to current version. So why did we uh, why did we build this thing? As many of you know, there's there's lots of other reporting tools out there. They've got the uh, Servoy native, uh, but that really doesn't have ng support anymore, and the feature set is uh, a little bit limited. We don't see too many people using that uh, anymore. You've got Jasper Reports, which is really an excellent uh, advanced uh, tool. You can do almost anything with Jasper Reports, but it really requires some advanced knowledge. So you're gonna need to be a developer and really learn uh, the iReport or Jasper Reports Studio tools in order to build those reports. Um, next up, we have Velocity Reports, uh, another great tool. It's really, uh, great for web developers. So it's uh, HTML based templates, uh, but it, it does require a little bit more advanced knowledge again, because you're gonna have to you know, understand CSS and HTML in order to really build your reports. And so we think that uh, really the special use case for this plugin is user customizable reports. Of course, you can do some general reporting like Paul showed, but because uh, the reports are done in Microsoft Word, uh, it really makes it easier for like a sort of your average customer to be able to customize their own report. So uh, use case wise, what we think is that like a SaaS solution where maybe you have like uh, some basic report templates, invoices or uh, grand summary kind of things, uh, you'll have a base report that'll get built by the developers. Uh, and then the customers would have the ability to sort of download that template and tweak it to uh, how they want styling it, uh, moving things around however they want. Uh, and then they'll be able to really have their own permutation of that report that's uh, really branded and customized to them without you having to build that for them. We're also working on a sample solution that will come with a data dictionary. Uh, so for those of you unfamiliar with that term, it will 
it'll go through all the found sets and relations that you're passing into your report and it will build a like a pdf report that you could share with your customer that will show what all the names are for the data objects and what the column names are that are available and then you could tweak that uh, to your to your liking So kind of recapping that. So we think the developer is going to build the standard report template. Um, you might go ahead and add some calculations to your solution just to make the hops a little simpler for the user or some of the formatting options. Um, and then it, we also think you would build a, a system that would allow the end user to see a list of your reports and then download that report uh, for them. And we'll kind of show that next. So yeah, the end user would come in, they would download the report template, they would open it up in Microsoft Word, they'd make their changes, they'd upload it back in through your system and they would click preview and then they would be able to see their report. And so that's kind of a, a workflow of how we see that uh, possibly working. Uh, as a bonus, you could integrate with Servoy's Office 365 component. So when they go to edit that uh, template, you could actually pop that up in the Office 365 online editor and they kind of could stay within your solution, do those edits, and you could hook into those changes and pull those back into your system. So they wouldn't have to launch like an external uh, editor. So some of the limitations, uh, currently only the equality operators are supported on the joins, so no greater than or less than. Um, constants on joins aren't supported yet. We are working on that and uh, sub-reports are not supported yet, but that's something that we are working on. So, so Scott, when you say the joins, you mean the, the relations that are, are passed in? Right, so like in Paul's example, he passed in you know, orders to order details. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be you know, uh, equal operators with uh, no constants. I, I couldn't do like customers to orders you know, last week or something. No, uh, the way you would do that currently would be to uh, use the filter options in the looping that Paul showed in the template. Or, or on the found set itself, I guess. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So current status, uh, we had a beta release in April 2nd. So if you do want to test this out, you would need to use the beta release in the IT2B installer. It's integrated into the existing Word plugin, so it's not, it's not a new plugin. It's going to be a free update for everybody that uh, is a current user with an active subscription. We're working on building sample solutions and better documentation. And we've got free trials at the website, servoycomponents.com. All right, so Q&A portion, and we've got some uh, useful links here. So our website for consulting and developing, itechpros.com and servoycomponents.com for your uh, plugins. Excellent. Well, thank you, Paul, for, for the wonderful demo and for uh, developing this, this wonderful extension. And thank you, Scott, for introducing it to us. Uh, the questions are coming in, so uh, let's go over a few. Um, uh, first question is, can, can users upload their own templates? Absolutely. So you really just have to pass in the path to uh, where that template would be. So by default, uh, Servoice file upload plugin allows you to specify like the default upload path. Mm -hmm. So you could you could handle that uh, however you wanted in your backend solution. Okay. Um, then uh, another question is: This functionality part of the standard Word plugin, or is it a new plugin? When will it be available? I think you covered that on the last slide. Um, yep. Okay. Um, then, um, uh, is this available only in the NG client or is it also available in the smart client? Smart web and NG. Okay. So, so for those of you that, that don't know the difference, NG clients are HTML5 client web client is our classic, uh, uh, client. So the more legacy version for the, the browser and then the smart client is a thin desktop and this product is available in all three. Um, can templates be multi-tenant or multi-user? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in the system we described, um, you really have your, you can decide, you can do it many ways. You can store the templates in the database if you wish, or you can store them in the file system. And then when the user clicks to actually run that report, 
you would just uh, decide how you want to handle that. So it could be like a, a folder based system where you go and look for that version of the report in their tenant ID folder and then you run that one. Uh, and if not, then you run the standard one. That's one example. Or you could have those actually stored in the database and then go out and get the right report based on who the user is and their session info. Right. So it's done server side. I guess it's up to you. You can do it however you like. Right. Okay. Uh, Juan asks, is it only for in memory? Uh, Juan, I don't quite know what you, what you mean. So can you maybe expand on that while we take some other questions? Um, can reports be scheduled? Um, sure. Uh, the plugin doesn't have uh, any features for that, but the headless client would be uh, supported as well. That's one we don't talk about too often, but you could definitely have a batch processor running server side that uh, takes a look at a database to figure out uh, what user wants uh, what reports and what time they should be sent out. And then you could make the plugin calls to execute those reports and then you know send them off to the user via an attachment or a link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be like the the complete version of this. So so just so you guys know, the um, topic Scott was talking about is available in a, I think a an older webinar about uh, the headless client or doing batch processes or scheduled tasks. So if you rewatch that from the archives and combine the learning from from that with this webinar, then you have the answer there. Uh, another question, can you use barcodes or QR codes in a Word document? Um, if the, uh, yes, so if the Word has that support, so via a, a plugin or extension or wherever you're uh, embedding those, it can uh, basically just pull from the uh, merged data just like anything else, just like images, for example. I don't think we showed an image, but uh, yeah, like a normal image, you can pass uh, that kind of data. Okay, and another question, does it require Word to be installed on the client? So is it, is it natively interacting with Microsoft Word on the desktop or something? Um, not at all. So Word doesn't need to be on the server or the desktop, and the client doesn't even have to use um, Word for that matter. Uh, if they're using like an open source LibreOffice, as long as the template is formatted correctly, and it's saved as a dot uh, docx file it will work okay and juan got back to us he said he said when he entered he saw that it only supports uh, memory data sources so i, th I think he, he came in while we were talking about that uh just uh, I'll, I'll answer this one just just to uh, reiterate this is uh based on servoy found set so all of the uh all of the little business objects that you have available in a servoy solution uh that are available in a servoy found set uh, will work and those can be uh, uh, mem tables, uh, which are like an in-memory implementation, or it could be bound to any relational data source. Um, well, I think that's it. You mentioned, we had one question about Office 365, but you did mention that it, it can work with Office 365 and that you can, you can pull the templates out of 365 and, and use them. Uh, yeah, and if right? we get a lot of requests for that, we might consider, you know, adding that as one of the sample solutions. Right, right. Okay. All right. Uh, it looks like uh, we answered uh, all of the questions. Um, uh, some, some comments also from uh, some fans of, of iTech Pros. Um, um, uh, these guys have been working for uh, many years in the Servoy community and really know what they're doing. And I think some of your customers are here uh, because you guys are here. So. I want to thank uh, I want to thank you guys uh, for joining this webinar, um, and uh, uh, you know this is really the kind of stuff we like to show, um, <clears throat> like to show what's possible, and we like to show what other people are doing uh, with Servoy and uh, with sort of all the ancillary technologies. So really, really great job, Paul. Uh, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, again, the recording will be available, and we'll be back again in two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.